Hi Frontline, this is Val. Uh, I am back with part two of how HIV meds work. Uh, if you were with us for the last section, you saw um, working through the HIV life cycle and all the different stages. If you haven't watched that one, I would recommend you do so before watching this one um, because we will refer to it. Um, but in this presentation, I want to talk about the different drug classes of HIV meds um, uh, with an understanding that they all uh, work at a different place in HIV's life cycle. So we have reverse transcriptase inhibitors. Um, there are both, I should, both nukes and non-nukes, so nucleoside analog reverse transcriptase inhibitors, and there's one nucleotide analog reverse transcriptase inhibitor. Um, Non-nucleosides are non-nucleoside analog reverse transcriptase inhibitors, but they're still in the same class and they work at the same place in the life cycle. Uh, we also have protease inhibitors, fusion and attachment inhibitors, and integrase inhibitors. We will expect to have more in the future, um, but all of these meds should be used in combination with one another. Everyone who's on HIV meds should be on a combination of meds. No one should ever just take one med. That's something known as monotherapy, um, and that's uh, not recommended. With 29 approved meds to choose from, there are a lot of combinations that we can make of different kinds of meds. Um, and so here we see how a combo works. We want to attack HIV from more than one direction. If we just mess with it at one point in its life cycle, um, it has enough it makes enough changes um, in its genetic material that the that often it's able to uh, get around if we attack it from one direction, but if we pin it from multiple sides, if we flank it as it were, then um, we are able to pretty effectively stop its entire life cycle. Uh, this takes three drugs or more, and sometimes they're from the same class of drugs, and sometimes they're from different classes. So let's look at the classes one at a time. Uh, here's a side note about med names, is that all HIV meds actually have three names. They have the brand name, so our example here is Retrovir, which nobody knows. Um, the generic name, the example is Zydovudine, um, or however one would pronounce that, that is not the what I just said. But everybody knows the research initials for this particular drug, which is AZT. All of these three things refer to the same drug, which is AZT. Some drugs are known just by their research initials, some drugs are known just by their brand name, some drugs are known just by their generic name. We're going to put them all on all of our slides um, so that you can see them. So. Class number one is the nukes. This was the first class that was uh, uh, invented or approved for use. Um, so nukes and RTIs, nucleoside and or nucleotide reverse transcriptase inhibitors. Uh, this is a list of familiar ones, um, and this is our one nucleotide analog reverse transcriptase inhibitor down here. Um, the nukes um, are also, they've been around for a long time, and uh, they actually have multiple nukes. There are some of these meds, Epsicom, Truvada, Trisavir, Combivir, um, that actually have more than one nucleotide or nucleoside in them. We also have one nuke that's been discontinued, and if you know anybody who's on Hyvid, have them call me because they shouldn't be. Um, so where do nukes work in the life cycle? Well, they work in step number four. This was the step known as reverse transcription, and nukes actually block the enzyme that does that reverse transcription, handily called the reverse transcriptase enzyme. If you remember, reverse transcriptase reads HIV's RNA and makes a photocopy of it so that it looks like DNA. The nuke drugs are little proteins that look like the enzyme HIV needs, the reverse transcriptase enzyme. Um, so they're fake building blocks. They fool HIV. HIV latches onto this nuke, this AZT, thinking that it's the enzyme that it needs, but it's not, and then it can't do anything. So we have some building blocks here to remind you that the nukes are fake building blocks. 
and you can see here's our li life cycle again um, and they work here in this uh, quadrant, reverse transcription, where the viral RNA that it comes with make a photocopy of itself and turn it into DNA to be put into the CD4 nucleus. So, um, non-nucs or NNRTIs, non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors, uh, there are four of these approved for use right now. Um, they work in the same Li place in the life cycle, they also work in the step four, but instead of being a fake building block, instead of substituting itself for the nucleoside enzyme, the non-nuke actually attaches itself to the enzyme and makes it useless. I always think of it as chocolate coating, magic shell chocolate coating, where the enzyme is the ice cream and the drug itself is the chocolate coating, so it's it makes it so that the HIV can't get to what it needs to get to and basically renders the enzyme useless in the body. So we also have protease inhibitors. Uh, the, there are a lot of them um, and these were the um, meds that were introduced in 96-ish uh, um, and that really, uh, one of the places where the tide really turned with HIV. Again, we have a discontinued one, Fortivase, um, but its active ingredient is here um, in, in inverase. So where do protease inhibitors work in the life cycle? They work at step 10 of the life cycle. Remember that's the maturation step. Um, the chains of proteins that the CD4 nucleus produces that have the proviral DNA in them need to be cut into specific pieces um, in order that HIV can become mature and then be a, an infectious virus. Um, and HIV produces a protein called protease that acts like scissors to cut the RNA. Um, so protease inhibitors stop that enzyme, that protein, and uh, gum up the scissors. So I always think of it as like a gift shop, like the um, HIV is trying to leave the gift shop that is the the CD4 cell, but it needs to s it need or the department store known as the CD4 cell, but it needs to stop at the gift shop so that it can wrap itself up nicely to be infectious for the next CD4 cell. And if the gift shop is closed, HIV can't leave. So basically protease inhibitors gum up the scissors that HIV uses to get out of the gift shop. Um, so again, here's the HIV life cycle and the protease inhibitors work in this stage here, this late stage. Um, we also have attachment and fusion inhibitors um, and they prevent the virus from attaching to a CD4 cell or from fusing into it. We have these together because they work at the same stage um, in the life cycle. We have one attachment inhibitor at the moment and one fusion inhibitor. Um, and so these basically keep HIV from having the key that unlocks the door that is the CD4 cell. So we'll show you on the life cycle here. Um, so HIV has to attach to a CD4 cell before it can fuse into it um, and HIV attaches to one of two co-receptors on the CD4 surface, um, CCR5 and CXCR4. I know it's total alphabet soup. Um, I don't know how they come up with the names for these but um, cells entry which is our um, entry inhibitor or um, blocks HIV from attaching to this particular type of co-receptor, not this type of co-receptor. Um, and many people have both of these. Um, there's a, a test called a tropism test, um, which we'll be covering more in detail later. Um, but tropism tests can be really useful for figuring out if um, if someone's own CD4 cells have CCR5 or CXCR4 or a mix of both. So the fusion inhibitor pre prevents HIV from fusing into the CD4 cell after it's already attached. Uh, both work at step two of the life cycle, which we see right here is binding and fusion. Um, it binds to the CD4 molecule and then it fuses into it. After that, it's able to infect. So both of those meds work before the virus has even gotten to the CD4 cell. 
Finally, the integrase inhibitor. Where does it work in the life cycle? Well, it stops the integrase enzyme. Um, and if you'll remember, integrase is the enzyme that edits HIV's photocopied RNA, that is, proviral DNA, into the CD4 nucleus. So this is really the film editing software, um, if you'll remember that. Um, and we only have one integrase inhibitor so far, Isentris. Um, it works in step five of the life cycle, which is right here, integration. This, the HIV DNA, also known as proviral DNA, gets spliced right into the middle of the CD4 nucleus uh, there. So, uh, next up we're going to talk about combinations and timing. I'll meet you there.